Hello there, future friends. I'm Keena, the host of the Historical AF Podcast. Katie and Nathan wanted me to let you know that this show contains a plethora of colorful language. In other words, they cuss a lot, guys. Like a ton. I wasn't supposed to cuss. <laughs> Anywho, if cursing isn't your jam, then this may not be the podcast for you. But if you're down for some F-bombs and you dig comedy history podcasts, then you're going to love this episode and you should head on over to my show. Historical AF is a boozy and delightfully foul mouth comedy podcast. We are a historian, that would be me, and some special guests delivering the funny, weird, spooky, and morbid historical nuggets you never knew you needed in your ear holes. Cheers, bitches! Hi, this is Katie. And this is Nathan. And you're listening to Queen's Podcast, the show about badass women in history. Hey, Nathan, how are you? Oh, glorious, glorious. uh, Glorious, that's what I like to hear. Amazing, amazing. Oh my gosh. Well, Nathan, are you excited for today's episode? Yes and no. I'm excited for the the subject, but I'm quite frightened at how sloshed I might get from this awful drink that I made. Okay, well, why don't we start (laughs) with that? Let's talk about this cocktail. What's it called? So it is called the Messalina. Um, so oh. that's our subject. Uh, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but it is comprised of two shots of bourbon, a half a shot of chocolate liqueur, and then a shot, because I'm, you know, was a, a shot of water. <laughs> 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 and then you shake it in your little martini shaker and pour into a martini glass and it tastes terrible. <laughs> um, it tastes like it looks motor oil. It does um, look like motor oil, yeah. If if uh, you are so fortunate to be part of the Patreon and got to see the booze clues, um, I literally just had to stop and smile because I almost gagged. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, I was like, I drank it. I was like, what? This is awful. <laughs> but you know what we're talking about somebody whose life has not actually has not gone down in history with the best reputation oh my gosh nathan <laughs> i wish you could have seen his face oh my goodness that was oh it's terrible i tried to cheers and just be like i'm gonna take my first sip of the fucking episode and god it's awful <laughs> and it was bad news bears <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, this reminds me of our Tigris for uh, Sforza. Oh, God. <laughs> it was just terrible. I am sitting I'm sitting this one out. I'm just drinking water. Earlier in the day when I realized, you know, I don't think I'm going to drink tonight. Um, oh, maybe I do want to. Now seeing how much you are not enjoying that cocktail, I am glad that I didn't go and get the ingredients. <laughs> Proud you made life decisions. Unlike me, I made bad ones. Just like Messalina. <laughs> Uh, so it's a messy drink. Bring for it Messalina. all, bring it all to messy Messalina. So before we get in to this dumpster fire of a story, let's do some Patreon shout outs. Yes, shout yes. outs to Valerie, Phoebe, Sarah, Jordan, Louise, Elizabeth, and Pamela. Thank you. And thank you to all of our supporters at every level, as well as anyone that listens to the show we love you bitches so yes note well not totally necessary if you want to go back and listen to the agrippina the younger episodes before listening to this or listen to it maybe like right after that might be just a good refresher to you or a good continuation of the story yeah if you're not good with ancient rome yeah, <laughs> yeah. you might want to go listen back to that one. It's got a, they've, they've got a lot of the same players, a lot of the same themes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so might be good for you. An- another note, uh, mm-hmm. in, in that series, we called Messalina Messy Messalina, and we mm-hmm. have also just kind of said We've already done it, yeah. As well, uh, because history has painted her to be messy as hell, but mm-hmm. I do want us to kind of note that... The historians in this time frame, and we've talked about it in the Boudicca episode and the Agrippina episodes. Cleopatra. They, 
They are the dickiest of the bag of dicks. They don't, they don't care for women very much, do they? No. Women get a bad rep. <gasps> and, oh, you sexist crazy. historians? You don't I, say. I'm calling 911. Katie can't breathe. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, no. Like, she did not deserve quite the history that probably given her. yeah maybe yeah so <laughs> possibly take take a lot of this story with a big old dump truck of salt okay like, just okay. all the salt yeah. yes yes so well, that being said let's get into it she was born valeria messalina in rome on january 25th either 17 or 20 AD. So that makes her an Aquarius. Yes. We'd be a good match. We'd be yes. a good match. Yes, yes. We don't know the year, not because Bag of Dicks necessarily, but it's thought that she probably lied about her age at different times in her life to kind of suit the scenario. So I love this. Look, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Her and every person in Hollywood. Cool, yeah. <laughs> she was born into a pretty powerful family, but not like the tippity top of the nobility. Yeah. She was just like the top that's been filed down a little bit. Yeah. Later. She's like the cousins. Like, She's like yes. the, the cousins of the people at the top of the food chain. Yeah. Not, not too shabby, right? Not yeah. too shabby. Yeah. Dad was a Roman consul, which was the highest level of elected official that you could be. In ancient Rome, but dad kind of drops out of the records around 21 AD. So I think it's a, it's safe to assume that he died, but we don't have any scandal around it. So probably of natural causes? Question mark. Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> but he would have died really young. Yeah. Uh, so Messalina's mom, Domitia, was the great niece of Augustus, the first emperor of Rome. So mm-hmm. if you listen to the Agrippina episode, we go at length to all of it. It's this. a flex. It's a flex yes. for her family. Yeah. Yes. But since they weren't like direct descendants, they weren't quite as bougie right. as the people underneath Augustus. So. Right. So her upbringing, so her upbringing, we just really don't know anything and we don't really have any good speculation. So let's just jump straight to her wedding day. Mary and your cousin. Um, <laughs> so before I say this next word, I'm going to try to take a sip of this god awful drink. <laughs> but oh god, <laughs> it's so bad. I'm so glad I skipped out on this one, Nathan. You are not selling it at all. So unlike my drink, refreshingly, Messalina <laughs> was ma- married sometime between the age of 18 and 21. So thank thank. God! I know, I know. Because I think, like, Agrippina was married the first time when she was, like, 13, 14. Yeah, um, and they were marrying, like, 50-year-old dudes. Yeah, yeah, it was really common for, like, a 14-year-old girl to be married off to a 50-year-old dude. So oh. thank God she was 18 <laughs> at least when she was married off to a 50-year-old dude. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm still, like, the, the drink on top of thinking about this makes yes. me a little nauseous. I don't love it. I don't love it. No, no. So, so let's get to know the lucky, lucky groom. Mm. Who's Tiberius, Claudius, Caesar, Augustus, Germanicus. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> but he's simply known as Claudius in history. Thank God. Yes. <laughs> it's a lot of Could names. Can you imagine? Yeah, it'd be like, uh, no, thank you. Pick a name. Pick a name, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> now, Claudius is from the tippity top, the very, very good family. So this was a fucking jackpot for Messalina and her family. Yeah. Um, historically, she's been painted as a very ambitious woman. So if that's true, she probably wouldn't have cared that he was almost 50. Um, she would have just yeah. been happy about like a, a an upgrade in her status. So you have to think also her age at the time. Since she's like 18, 21, at least she's a little more cognitive than a 14-year-old would be. Yeah, there's a big difference in yeah. sexual maturity from 14 to 18. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, she's eventually thinking at the end of the day, 
this dude's probably just going to end up dying anyway because it's Rome. It's yeah. Rome, and this is natural causes happening all the time. Yeah, 50, 50 is pretty old for that time. Sixty yeah. is ancient. So he's forty eight. Hey. He's not the picture of health to begin with. So you're mm-hmm. right. She was probably just like, whatever. It's going to be a great up, you know, status boost, and I, he's going to die, and I'm still going to have lots of years with his money and it's yeah a win-win and, situation except yeah. for claudius who's dead who's dead but he would have had <laughs> he would have had a hot a hot young wife before dying um okay but okay. also i mean she probably would have always expected to marry a much older dude anyway so yeah even though it's cringeworthy now it's still, it was the it's norm. still cringeworthy yeah but yeah, it's the norm. yeah but it was <laughs> so, the norm. here's what you need to know about claudius if this is the first time that you're knowing anything about Roman history. Right. So Claudius is from the upper crust of the Roman mm-hmm. nobility. Mm-hmm. Like think of the Kennedys uh, right. in terms of royal families. Ancient um, Rome Kennedys. Absolutely. Yeah. So except like Claudius would be that Kennedy that nobody really wants to talk about. Yeah, Everyone's like, Urgh. let's get, let's, let's not invite that Kennedy to dinner. He was not, popular he was um so he's his niece and nephew are agrippina and caligula and caligula is the emperor at the time of this marriage so with all these major power players in this family family claudius is like the bottom of the barrel like he's super overlooked he wasn't charming he wasn't handsome he wasn't witty um his own mother would like straight up always tell him that he was like a curse and that he was her least favorite kid oh my god not everybody could be beyonce right (laughs) i'm sorry not everybody could be beyonce his brother germanicus (laughs) who is like caligula's dad his brother germanicus basically was beyonce like yeah and it's like not everybody can can is exactly just like that i'm very sorry yeah sorry mom like I'm not cute. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but why was he? Why was she so harsh on him, Nathan? Yeah, he did have some physical deformity. So apparently, he had a bad leg and walked with a limp. Uh, probably had a speech impediment, and he would randomly drool, which I do too. So I can totally relate. <laughs> I've um, never seen you randomly drool. Uh, no, I know, I know. Okay, right? okay. <laughs> he would have a really creepy laugh that would just burst out at the worst times, which I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> he was said to maybe have like um, cerebral palsy. So, oh, but back then, like, there's, I mean, aw. we obviously can't diagnose him or anything. That makes me real sad. I know. I would, and, and back then, we've talked about this before, um, physical deformities. They equated to something's wrong with you. In, but like, your spirit. Your like spirit, Yeah, or you're wrong. cursed or something. Um, and uh, so even though he turns that. out to be like probably a pretty smart guy, the first half of his life up until his marriage to Messalina, people just thought he was a dud. Oh my gosh, that's terrible because he's fully uh, uh, able to do what it- Anyway, anyway, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> a lot so, of people, complete side note, and people let us know if you want to hear about this on Patreon, maybe. A lot of people think that um, Tyrion from Game of Thrones is based on Claudius. Ah, ah makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. But obviously Claudius is not taken seriously because they are, they are not cool with being disabled back then. Yeah. Uh, because... They just assumed that he was stupid and slow, and he wasn't viewed as a threat to his nephew Caligula. So he's still rich, and in the eyes of Messalina, she really probably wouldn't have any complaints about any of this. She'd just be like, eh, I don't know. But we really have no idea. We have no idea idea. what the nature of their marriage was, though the story goes that Claudius was obsessed with his new bride. She was his third wife. No, third wife, fourth wife. She was up there in his wives. She was young and beautiful. And she appears to at first been like really popular and really funny. And I guess just made him feel young again, you know, like because he was 48 and it was the ancient world. So he's got a little pep in his step with his new little hot wife. Yeah. Everybody's winning. 
Yeah. Yeah. Soon after their wedding, Messalina even gets pregnant. So yay. 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 Uh, Healthy baby girl named Claudia Octavia uh, because they're not clever with names. No. And then bam, next year. New baby. So baby on baby on baby. No, just well, just baby, baby on, on baby. baby. But still, <laughs> like, oh, we've talked about this before in ancient episodes where the birth rate for ancient Rome probably had something to do with, like, those hot baths that they took. But, like, families often didn't have a whole lot of kids. So two babies back to back that, that like, survived infantness. Yes, Infantness. Infantness. Infanthood. Infancy. Infancy. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Infantness sounds like the stars of infantness. Anywho, uh, that year they give birth to a baby boy named Tiberius Claudius Caesar, who would later be known as Britannicus. That's like legit. Google it. Yeah, like if (laughs) if you're looking him up, you're going to look up the name Britannicus. So that's just what we're going to call him because that's usually what we do on this show just call the person like the name that they're famous by because yes. it's just confusing to be like and then let's change the character's name halfway through the show you know not fun not fun but then also not fun caligula gets sick right. uh we talk about this more in the agrippina the younger episode but big turning point mm-hmm. caligula makes a full recovery but he's never quite there right (laughs) something's a little off (laughs) if you know anything about roman history you probably know the name caligula and if you don't well let's teach you about caligula he's a dick he's not a nice guy after he has this sickness the end (laughs) no but he had been like this um shining star of the like this he was like the JFK Jr. of the JFK, the Kennedy ancient world family. But then he gets sick. And whenever he recovers, he's like had a mental break or something. And he turns yeah, into this very, crazy. It's very similar to what we've do- done in the Anne Boleyn episode with Henry VIII. It's where very similar. Jousting accident. Something happens to them that's very traumatic physically. Mm-hmm. And then something happens to their brain. You know, yeah. that they're something clicks and they're just now crazy. Yay. Right. And but now he's Roman emperor with like unchecked power. And he's his one of his greatest joys in the world as emperor is making his uncle's life a living hell, which Aww, is that's so sweet. I know. Family <laughs> activities. Uh, he would openly mock him mm-hmm. about his speech impediment. Mm-hmm. And of course, like everyone in court's gonna laugh. Like they're not You're not gonna stand not gonna... up for Claudius and then get killed by Caligula for doing so, you know? Of course. Starvation yeah. Island, no thank you. No, thank you. Starvation Island is way too real. Um Claudius he... wasn't the only person that Caligula was pissing off. So long story short, he got all kinds of murder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Calig- uh. Caligula got all kinds of murdered so he'd be, he be dead bye okay. caligula like <laughs> he, he's not he's not long for this story <laughs> yeah and when this happens it was a really scary time for the immediate family mm-hmm. uh, like so for real like are they gonna come and murder me too right <laughs> i mean it's not that's not far-fetched no thing. no and i couldn't <laughs> find anything about like so when caligula was assassinated um we think that claudius maybe was in on it but then when the assassins killed the um, Caligula's wife and two-year-old daughter is when Claudius probably went Whoo! like and ran home like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. You know, like they're coming for all of us. So I couldn't find out where Messalina would have been at the time. I like to think that he probably, hopefully he gave her a heads up like, hey, go to your mom's house for a few days or something. Yeah, because otherwise that would be real scary. Right? And Britannicus was only like a few weeks old. Like she had a newborn. And so if she was home and these guards show up to her house, she could have been like, are they here to kill me and my kids? Cause we're like next in line, you know, like. Oh. So after Caligula, AKA little boots, little boots. Uh, was killed. Uh, he died. Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> Claudius ran. Uh, he kept running. He was and- running. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that the assassination had killed Caligula's wife and kid, and that was actually not part of the plan. Right. So in you know Claudius's eyes, he's thinking, "Oh my God, they're killing the whole imperial family. They're coming. I'm for dead. Me. Yeah. Yeah." It's Romanovs. Going to be Romanovs, yeah, yes, very, very yes, much. Yes, yes. <laughs> so when the council came and found him to declare him emperor, the story goes that they found him shaken in his sandals behind a curtain, like, like. So, and again, we don't know where Messalina was. So I really wish that we we knew what was going on. And he, but yeah, he's convinced they're going to kill me. But in their stead, instead, they're like. um, you're emperor now. And it's like, didn't you just kill the last guy that was emperor? And they were, and they were like, yeah. And he was like, do I have a choice here? And they're like, absolutely not. And it's like, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> That's what would suck about being royalty. Because right? it's just like, uh, you might get killed, but that, that you've got a fancy palace. Cool. Ah. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, if Messalina was there for that, she must have been terrified. Like, what the fuck is going on? But base ca- best case scenario, they didn't kill her. They made her empress. Hey, hey, hey. It's not <laughs> a bad plan. Not a bad plan. So Not a bad turn she- of events at all. Exactly. Now she's empress. And that's where all the uh, uh, fun begins. New empress, who this? <laughs> it's Messalina, bitch. Bitch! <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, this is where she becomes messy. Messalina. Let's yeah. get real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think it's important to recognize that all of the sources that write about her are hugely biased. Um, first of all, none of them were fucking there. None of them yeah. were alive during her lifetime. So, we talked about that with Boudica too. Like in Boudica episode, and- it's like a centuries later they're talking yeah. about this. like you weren't even there bro most she doesn't of, go here she doesn't <laughs> even go here so none of them were alive um one big source is tacitus and he hates claudius and he loves to write about claudius as this guy who is just easily led by the last person he talked to especially his wives and um bag of dicks bag, bag of, of dicks, dicks. History yes. Is a bag of dicks. yes he <laughs> paints claudius's wives as like these super man- super manipulative women um so we can't really take him at his word yeah and then another source is a poet named juvenile who was literally wrote satire he was so a satirist yeah like you- poet or like source and quotes yeah and he, 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 right and it's all political satire so you can't take it seriously right. at the end of the day he was also again born after her death right. wrote the satire i mean it's like it's like watching diana the musical <laughs> and quoting it as absolute fact for references on princess diana's life right no right I wish no. <laughs> Diana the Musical had actually been satire, though. But yes, that's a very good comparison. This poem by Juvenal, we're going to go into a little bit later in more depth. But the fact that anyone takes that as, as, like, as a credible source is... Bullshit. Bad. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> and then there was Suetonius. And he's basically like a gossip columnist, I feel like. So, yeah. Take... You, these aren't really credible sources, you know? Yeah, yeah. Again, dumpster truck full of salt. Dumpster truck full <laughs> of salt. But that being said, let's get into the messy shit. Oh, God. So 41 AD was a huge year for Messalina. Yeah. She has her baby boy. She becomes empress. Her son becomes the heir presumptive. Because baby boy, you been on my mind. Fulfill, fulfill my, my reach and see. see. <laughs> <Ba-dum, bum, bum. laughs> so things are looking good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And at the beginning of Claudius's reign, Messalina was a fucking hit. There were yeah. statues made in her honor. Everyone praised her, made a I mean, they're making a huge fuss about her. Right. She is the talk of the town. She's the empress. She has an infant baby boy. She's likely gonna be mom to the next emperor so uh you might she's killing it friends with her yeah killing it yeah she's doing great so then the senate voted to give her the title of augusta um a huge oversimplification of what this means is it's just like the highest highest title a woman could get in ancient rome it's like almost next to being like a deity kind of 
Um, so it was a big fucking deal. And I'm sure Messalina would have very much loved to been an Augusta. Um, the only other woman who had ever received that title at this time was the first, was the wife of Augustus. So the, fir- the OG empress, if you will. Ah, so I think this reason the Senate wanted to do this was that Rome just went through fucking turmoil mm-hmm. in the last few years with crazy Caligula. Yeah. So they wanted to paint this picture of like a happy imperial family. It, it's like a PR makeover for yeah. the Roman imperial family. Yeah, let's put uh-huh. this empress up on a pedestal. Let's, you know, really talk up this new emperor. Maybe he won't kill any of us. Yeah. Like, yeah. absolutely. And Messalina has got to be pumped about this, right. you know? Like, and then Claudius says no. Wait, what? Like, ugh. what? <laughs> what? That. Uh, <laughs> Ouch. That's fucking. Yeah. He, he vetoed it, but he did pass. Um, a vote to make his mother Augusta, even though she's already passed on. And it's like the mother that was like ashamed of you and called you names your whole life, but not the wife who has given you a son. Like, and at least seems like, you know, you get along a little bit. Like, I don't know. I don't know. This, this was a huge public insult to Messalina. Can you imagine how embarrassed you'd be? I, like, as if I was, I mean, I can't say as a spouse, but if I was somebody's <laughs> spouse and they literally were like, no, I'm not giving you this title because only my mom deserves it. And your mom was a fucking asshole. I'd be like, hey, guess what? I'm not a fucking asshole. Yeah. So give me the title. <laughs> I It, it would have really, I feel like that would have really hurt me. Like, yeah, um, I agree. What? Well, I, I, I can't really figure out his um, decision making here besides that maybe he doesn't want to like go too fast, too furious, like <laughs> too much yeah, at once. I yeah. don't, but like maybe he was thinking, oh, we have plenty of time in the future. But I think this was a huge turning point for Messalina um, and her opinion of her marriage, you know? Yeah, of course, because like at this point, I'm sure the rumor mills are flying because we have the satire and the gossip columnists and all that shit happening. (laughs) Uh, So the rumor mills flying about all of this. And one of the rumors is, oh, is she going to get divorced with, you know, the Is Claudius going to leave her? Yeah. Yeah. Well, divorce was really common in ancient Rome. Yeah. That was not something that would be um, frowned upon because you did that for political reasons. Yeah. Every day. So I'm sure everyone around her is like, oh, he's probably planning to divorce her. That's why he didn't make her Augusta. And she just has to put up with it. Yeah. And I think she gets a little desperate. Um, Mm -hmm. because she starts looking around for different allies, you know, and in ancient Rome, there weren't a whole lot of ways for women to make allies. If you've married somebody who's not like at the tippy top of the food chain, right? so you've only got a couple of ways to do that. Right. And she's thinking like, if Claudius leaves me, I need to already have a second husband lined up and he needs to be somebody powerful because I've had a taste of being at the top of the food chain and I'm not interested in going back down. So yeah, she, she probably started, she probably started sleeping around a little bit. Yeah. And that, that's a little bit of blackmail too, right? Like you could use that as like political fodder to like stoke some flames and shit. Uh, But uh, we're not saying but we're just I'm not saying. saying, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> also, it was ancient Rome. Everyone was sleeping around with everybody. I mean, we've know? all heard about the Roman orgies. I mean, Greek yeah. orgies, too. But this but, is all yeah, the same but, time. Sure. Same time. Yeah, sure. Same time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just think she was desperate to stay in power. And she thought, this is a way that I can make some, you know, form some allies. And so she started sleeping around. But, like, I don't think she was a nymphomaniac. Like, we're going to talk about how she has been portrayed. No, no, I don't think so either. I think Messalina was desperate to stay in power. Mm -hmm. But I don't think she was as bad as they put her. She was thinking about her future. Right. She was thinking, like, if he leaves me. 
what am I going to do? Like if Claudius leaves me, so she's yeah. got to look at some other options. Exactly. So I think that this is a good place to take a quick break and then we can come back and see what some of those options were. And we're back. So Messalina is looking to make some powerful friends and is possibly doing that through sex. But bow chicken bow cow. Ow, ow. <laughs> but it wasn't all sex. There was sex and there was scandal, but we'll get to it. But she did make one, but she made one strategic friendship with a freedman named Narcissus. So oh, wait, wait, wait. What's a freedman? It's someone that had previously been enslaved that was now free. Uh, oh, hence the term free. freed man. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I love how you do that to me. <laughs> I don't have any details on like where he was from, like, but Rome in Rome they had lots of enslaved people from places like probably Britain and Germany and they conquered all kinds of places. So Claudius was notorious for not trusting the nobility. Mm -hmm. He would often like consult with the most surprising type of people, AKA his BFF and consultant Narcissus. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think, I think that's kind of cool. Cause I mean, yeah, he was like, y'all all kill all, the nobility are the ones that have been making fun of me my whole life. And right. they, have killed my nephew. He's like, I kind of, I think my nephew deserved to be killed, but now that I'm the one in power, I'm a little, I'm a little I mean, apprehensive. It, it makes sense. Like you're, if the whole thing with the politics in Rome is it's like families divorcing and weddings and things like everybody's trying to backstab each other in a way as well. Like yeah. there's a lot of politics happening. So maybe getting, the view of somebody who has nothing to do has nothing. With Imperial yeah. Rome. They don't that have family. Yeah. yeah. They don't have, yeah. they don't have an, they don't have an interest. In yeah. Well, Narcissus had an interest cause he was very like, he was Claudius's main advisor. But yeah, I think that's why Claudius trusted him. Cause he was like, he didn't have family ties. Yeah. He didn't mm -hmm. have anybody that he like felt loyalty to besides Claudius. Um, and I think Messalina and Narcissus saw each other as people in a similar situation. Like, yeah. Claudius being emperor significantly improved both of their standings, and they were both really into their new power. Yeah. And um, so the two start spending time together, planning, like, who they were going to take down next. Allegedly. Allegedly. Though, interesting on... Interestingly enough, Narcissus is uh, Narcissus is like the only man with a Messalina conne connection that they don't have any stories about them two sleeping together. So, oh, oh. I, oh. Oh. so we don't want to get into every person that Messalina and or Narcissus brought down together. Because there were a lot. Yes. Uh, in the first seven years as Emperor Claudius had a lot of people executed. And yeah. a lot of people point to Messalina as having a huge sway on her husband. So he just basically, quote unquote, did whatever she said. Yeah. But I'm like, er, is that real? Is I that don't real buy that because if he just, quote unquote, did whatever he said, she said, he would have made her Augusta. Yeah. Uh, Claudius is suspicious. Yes. He's suspicious of the nobility. He's suspicious of his wife. I So I don't think he was blindly following what anybody said. But... Yeah, they they call this time like of Messalina, like basically of her just pointing to people and being like, kill them. And Claudius being like, OK, babe, you know, like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> There's this one story that's so stupid and it but it sums up how dumb they wanted to paint Claudius and how conniving they wanted to paint uh, Messalina and Narcissus. All right, so the story goes that. All right, Messalina's mom had remarried this guy named Salinas, and Messalina tried to seduce Salinas just because, you know, fuck my stepdad. 
Why not? Ancient Rome. His, Everybody's his doing name, it. His name is Salanus. Salanus. It kind of looks like silly anus. Yeah. <laughs> silly anus. Silly anus. Yeah. So she's trying to fuck her stepdad, you know, just because she's a nymphomaniac. And he turned her down. So what do you do when you're faced with rejection? Conspire to have them killed. Obviously. So, as one does. As one, as does. one does. So the story goes that Messalina, Narcissus, and Claudius are hanging out. And Messalina was like, hey, I've been having this recurring dream that's just like so crazy. So crazy. I dream that Selenus, my stepdad, tried to break into the palace and kill Claudius. And Narcissus was like... Girl, shut up. I had the same dream last night. <laughs> and Claudius is like, wow, again. That's suspicious. It's like, well, that's, that's, you both had the same dream? I gotta, that's, I'm gonna keep my eye on that fucking guy. Huh. Right? So the next morning, Narcissus sent a note to Selenus being like, hey, um... Claudius wants to see you, you know, kind of, sort of, ASAP. Urgent. And, urgently get up to the palace. And even though the sun wasn't up yet, he was like, okay, they just said ASAP, so that means as soon as possible. I wonder what that would be in ancient Rome. In Latin? I Yeah. Mm. Who cares? As soon as... Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Selenus. <laughs> Pinacopus. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Nailed it. Absolutely. <laughs> so they got down to the fucking palace. And yes. <laughs> when he gets down there and the guards won't let him in, Narcissus rushes in to Claudius and is like, hey, Selenus is fighting with the guards. He tried to break into your room to murder The dreams you. have come true. He's here to it's kill you. To and again, this is another, you know, story that's supposed to paint Claudius as like a total idiot. And him just being like, oh, okay, okay. Y'all both have this dream. What could possibly be your other motive here? And that was Cla- an excellent Claudius impression. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but so Claudius took this all as proof positive that his wife and his best friend are psychic. And um, <laughs> having having psychic dreams about murders. It, and yeah, he he has Selenus executed, leaving Messalina's mom a widow. Again. Again. And there are a lot of stories like this, but we choose to tell this one like in particular because it does display the bad things that all of the historians had said about Messalina. You know, yeah. Because she was messy, girl. Yeah. Number one. She was a slutty McSluck face. Total, she liked, total slut face, yeah. Likes fucking her stepdad. Yeah, That's not yep. cool. Number two, she was constantly scheming. Mm-hmm. Number three, that she held some magical sway. We've seen this over and over and yes. over again. How they have a magical sway over this emperor because right. they're just whatever. And he's also portrayed as an idiot, so you yeah. have to see that. Um, and then... Finally, number four, that if you pissed her off, she was going to get you killed. She was going to get you killed. So, and not like the not like the Scottish kilt. Like no, actual no. Dead. She was going to make make sure you were not alive anymore. Um, yes. Who knows if this actually happened? It is a very very popular story. Um, it's a little too over the top for me to believe every aspect of it. But I don't. Maybe she did try to fuck her stepdad. I don't know. Um, Oh, that is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't just men that Messalina was said to have fucked over hardcore like this. So two of Claudius's nieces were exiled, executed mm-hmm. during, you know, Claudius's reign. Yeah. Both of these executions are attributed to Messalina because she was jealous of their beauty and they got too much attention. And uh, they weren't French. I don't know why. I yeah. Had a French yeah. There. Mm-hmm. Je ne sais. Um, <laughs> I I struggle to believe this though, just because. So one of the nieces that Claudius got killed was Julia Livia, and she had been part of the plot to kill Caligula the first time. There were several plots to kill Caligula, but she had been part of the first <laughs> plot to kill Caligula. So I think that more tracks with Claudius being 
nervous about um, the, the nobility killing him. This is literally coming in line of why Narcissus is an advisor. Is he's like an outsider, no family yes, connections, yes. No, so no family ties. We need to insert the the theme song to Family Ties. Right? <laughs> we should. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> so let's uh, let's uh, shift gears into sexy mix, sex, sex gear. Put it. In, put let's put this. Let's put this shit in sex drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is what Messalina is most known for. Uh, Claudius would be gone for long, long stretches, and as mm-hmm. we know, Messalina, she's just a hoe for show. She can't keep um, it in her. She can't keep it in her toga. And, uh, <laughs> and I did, did okay. Get it, yeah. girl. Like get it, girl. Oh, whatever. This is Roman culture, and uh, he's cheating on her too. So he has mistresses. Whatever. Yeah. 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 His his biggest accomplishment was gaining the control of the islands of Britain, um, which meant he's got to be gone a lot. Right. Right. And so the story is that when he was gone, Messalina just turned the royal palace into or- an orgy. It was just all everybody having sex all the time. Non-stop sex party. I need a free ticket to this you need party. you need an invitation to the messalina <laughs> sex party i didn't get the evite shit i'm two thousand years too late <laughs> so i thought it would be fun now for us to do some queen's podcast theater because we are fans of the theater we are thespians <laughs> acting so this is this is the famous the famous uh satire written by juvenile um about Messalina that's so famous, but I would like to start it with that it is part of a like epic mm-hmm. poem titled Don't Marry. <laughs> and just like each poem in the satire is about a different woman from history who was horrible. And so Messalina is the slut in the story. So that should tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> title alone should give you so all right nathan so what we're gonna do is nathan's gonna take a line from the poem and i'm gonna put it in uh queen's podcast um english sorry i just took a sip of that nasty ass drink so i gotta clear my throat (laughs) clear your palate (laughs) hear how claudius suffered When his wife Messalina knew he was asleep, the empress dared at night to wear the hood of a whore, and she (laughs) preferred a mat to her bed in the palace. All right, so what we're hearing here is that she preferred a dirty mattress on the floor in a nearby brothel to her fancy bed in the palace with her husband. And like we said, by the way, Claudius slept around too, and I don't think they were even sharing a bed anymore at this point, so... Okay, that's a lot of speculation, juvenile. <clears throat> She'd enter a brothel of the stank of old soiled sheets and make an empty cubicle her own, then sell herself. First of all, I love that they call sex workers workspace cubicles. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but also he's painted a picture here, hasn't he? Like I can I can smell this place. Mm, Yeah, it's not good. Her nipples gilded, naked, taking She-Wolf for a name. She-Wolf? We keep seeing that in history. There is Isabella of uh, France, uh, Margaret of Anjou. We got, she was the first She-Wolf. I love that for her. Second, second question. What, why are her nipples gold? What is that? What, what, gilded nipples? Was that a... I'm embarrassed to say that I did Google ancient Rome gilded nipples and I couldn't find anything about it being like a fashion that like, did, like were they golden plated bras por- or, or did she you got paint porn sites? You just got a lot of porn sites. Did she paint her nipples? <laughs> like, did she dip them in like some gel? Like what? I need more information about her gold nipples. <laughs> <clears throat> She'd flatter her clients on entry and take their money, then lie there obligingly, delighting in every stroke. All right, so there's nothing wrong with being sex positive, but I'm sorry, what? 
We're saying the Empress of the Roman Empire was such a nymphomaniac that she would be into any dude off the streets. Do you know how bad people in history smelled? Like, she and, like, her dudes that she's actually fucking are the upper crust. So they're actually, like, taking baths every day. These are, like, fishermen and blacksmith coming off the Uh. streets smelling like... Smelling like they don't know what a bath is, and you think the Roman Empress was just like, "Give me that fisherman dick!" Like what? <clears throat> when the pimp dismissed his girls, she'd leave reluctantly. <laughs> then she'd leave exhausted by man, but not yet satisfied. So the picture we're painting here is that it's closing time at the brothel. They're playing closing time. <laughs> One more cup out. And she's like, no, guys, let's go to the after party. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's shutting down their cubicle. And Messalina is like, no, I need some stinky Roman men up inside me immediately. Like, what? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> A disgusting creature with a filthy face, taking her brothel stench back to the emperor's bed. Why is her face filthy? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't even want to know. Again, Juvenile can paint a picture. I can smell her going back. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, that, that was a beautiful reading, Nathan. Absolutely. Yo, welcome. Yo, welcome. Actor. <laughs> I loved the uh, side narrations. Yeah, I kind of feel like I need a, a shower if I'm being <laughs> honest. <laughs> I know, right. So, this was all written like a long time after Methalina's life. Yeah. But it does give you the idea of what kind of reputation she had. Exactly. We, but we just don't know. But a lot of people have taken it as fact. Like, we don't even know how she would have made her nipples gold. This is just all speculation. (laughs) But she... (laughs) But she did have affairs, and so did Claudius. But since she's a woman, she's the one with a bad reputation, and he's the one painted as, like, this poor man just waiting for his wife to return to him. Like okay, bro, take uh, several seats. Right. But in one of her affairs, she did meet one guy mm-hmm. that, in our opinion, was more than just a guy. You the know sh- that she yeah. tried to use to get ahead. Yeah, I think she was actually like in love with this guy. So his name was Gaius Silius. Gaius Silius or Gaius. Gaius Silius? Gaius. Gaius. I, think I wanted to be gay as Silius because Aww. that's me. That he's just, be a, he's <laughs> just a silly little gay. Aww. You, you are gay as Silius. To, that is my stage name. Everybody, welcome to the stage. Gay as Silius. And you'll be like, you'll be like, you silly goose, and your nipples will be gold. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Silius was closer to her age. He was, uh, I keep thinking he's like 2006 Barack Obama, basically. Okay. He's a senator. He's really popular. He's charismatic. Everybody's like, this guy's got some new and fresh ideas. He was the up and coming. I mean, I guess we could stick with the Kennedy as well. Maybe he's the JFK. I don't know. Anyway, he um, he's just like this up and coming star. And I really do believe that she fell in love with him. And as far as I can tell that um, after they met in 47 AD, there was no other man for her. Yeah. Now, according to sources, Silius didn't like her at the beginning, but he was like, Oh, well, better roll with the punches and, you know, do what she wants me to do or else I'll get killed. Um, So he divorced his wife and Messalina started slowly, bringing her belongings over to his house like that you know like that couple where they just like start bringing <laughs> one suitcase at yeah. a time and before yeah. you're like hey i'm bringing my couch over today is that cool? yeah is that, are you okay with that <laughs> so i don't i don't i take issue with this description because like they were not discreet about their relationship and truly if he wasn't like act- love makes you do dumb things you know and like yeah. if he if he wasn't thinking with his heart, like he would have been way more discreet. So I don't know. That's my opinion. That's my two. Yeah. I think it's like either it's like that's that's just a really dumb move. Just like yeah. what? what? I think they were, they what were drunk in love. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? You think that they were actually in love? I I 
I, I do. Yeah. Because there's no other reason why you would do that with the Emperor's wife. Right. Like, everyone else was real discreet about it, but they're, like, out in public making out at the forum. You know, like, yeah, just... funny thing happened on fun, the way to the forum. Funny, the <laughs> Empress was making out with some dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Messalina does not want to divorce the Emperor, though, for this random dude she's making out with on the funny thing that happened on the, on the way to the forum. forum. Yes, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but she did want to get him in. She wants, she's going in. Oh, um, she, she wanted to get him into the, the inner circle of advisors. Yeah. And so her former BFF, uh, Narcissus is like, he didn't like that. He loved that. Claudius only wanted to surround himself with other freedmen and other people that were kind of like, didn't have like such a cush beginning in life. Narcissus saw this as a threat when he was like, you're trying to bring a Senator here. Like, look at this guy. He's fucking 2006 Barack Obama. Claudius is never going to listen to me again. What are you doing? You know? Yeah. And then on top of that, Messalina went after another freedman in Claudius's inner circle. So the story goes that Messalina was sleeping with this other freedman because she's just, because she just can't get it, get it. She can't get enough. Yeah, and she's with Polybius, and when she got tired of him, she had Claudius just kill him. Yeah. Hey, okay, I'm done with your dick oh, head, t- so off with your real head. Ah! Ah! <laughs> and this is like the messy Messalina part of it, just off, off, done with your dick head, off with your real head. Like, yes, 100%. More than like, it's probably just Polybius got like too big as for his britches and like started telling Claudius what to do a little too much. But because history is a bag of dicks, no, uh, uh, Messalina got sick of fucking him, so had him killed. And uh, Narcissus was like, I was fine when we were taking down the rich folks, but now that you want to take down the freedmen and move your rich boyfriend into the palace, they went from friends to enemies real fast. Put a pin in that. Okay, so detour. Screw. Um, it's time to talk about Agrippina the Younger. We have like three episodes on her, so, so let's, we're not going to spend too much time on her. But she yeah. is. Yeah, this part's important. Yeah, we got to be. We got to be brief. But yeah. Agrippina the Younger is Claudius's only surviving niece from his brother Germanicus. Because mm-hmm. remember, he had like all the nieces executed. They're just killing family members left and right, left here. and right, left, right, and center. So Agrippina. The younger lays real low because you're gonna die, girl. Um, but then the younger forward. was smart, and so she was like, You know what? We're just gonna sit at home, we're gonna stay at home, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna watch Netflix, we're gonna um, watch the old Netflix. But then, fast forward to 48 AD, Messalina has been empress for seven years now, so her son Britannicus was also about to be seven. So the Emperor Claudius decides to hold this event called the Secular Games. So it is a huge event. Huge. Like, I kind of was comparing it to Mardi Gras. Because, like, it's it's just a big party, even though, like, the actual reason for it is based in religion. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Mardi Gras Fat Tuesday. Yeah. But um, it was just a big party. It was a big fucking deal. The entire country basically comes out to the secular games um and, and messalina it, is the wife of the empress so she wants to fucking shine baby shine. it is my time to shine shine bright like a diamond yes absolutely. <laughs> yes. so she and her son and heir britannicus they are looking fabulous dripping in toga eleganza, eleganza. <laughs> toga jewels they look they show up looking like this is our time for our adoring public to see us and rightfully so they are running the country at this time expecting to see that people are gonna like cheer them and stand up and give them a standing ovation you know and get this huge reception and they they got a, a good reception they did yeah like, yeah yeah it was not bad like they entered the games and everyone was Pretty woo! happy to see we them. Yeah. Yes, woo! But then shit got real shit and got Beyonce real. showed up. <laughs> Beyonce showed up. <laughs> Beyonce showed up and Beyonce is Agrippina the Younger. And I guess Nero, her son Nero is Blue Ivy. And yes. <laughs> the only time we'll ever make that a comparison. But... <laughs> 
Agrippina and Nero walk in and the crowd fucking loses their shit in a way that they just did not do for Messalina and Britannicus. Like they were just so much more excited to see these people. And it was a huge slap in the face to Messalina. And I can just imagine it being like, it got under her fucking skin. She was like, what the fuck? Oh, I bet so. So it was Messalina first and then Agrippina second? Yeah, Messalina and Britannicus that, came in first. And so then, that's the message on timing. You yeah. let the Empress's wife come in as the last. As the female. last, yes. You yes. to come in. But I mean, not, it would have been not, just <laughs> as embarrassing, though, if Agrippina came in and it would have been a huge thing. And then Messalina yeah, yeah. came in and it wasn't like, it'd be like whatever yeah. act had to follow the Beatles and <laughs> Ted's. It's all of yeah, it, you know, like. they're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Agrippina's lineage is much like she's related to Paul McCartney. Like, yes, <laughs> yes, basically. <laughs> and while it, I mean, she's not, no. uh, she's Augustus. Uh, but uh, while it, it was ideal, you know, that a son would inherit, it wasn't a given. Mm-hmm. So if the people preferred Nero to her son Britannicus, Claudius could be swayed to make Nero the heir, not his own son. Yeah. And you have to keep in mind that everybody thinks Claudius is slow and yeah. idiot and dumb. And so this Nero's is a little bit older too. And maybe you'd say that Nero has a better claim than Britannicus, you know? So yeah, it's, um, mm, it made Messalina very nervous. Um, very nervous. And I think this was a huge, this is kind of the beginning of the end for Messalina. Spoiler alert, she is not still around. She is no longer with us. Um, <laughs> she left those games a desperate, desperate woman. And I'm thinking maybe a little bit unhinged, being like, what does this mean for my son? Um, yeah. Rewind a little bit back to when. <laughs> <laughs> when Claudius didn't allow her to take the title of Augusta, that would have given her son a little bit more credit, credibility uh, as well. Yeah. If she's yeah. got this, like, s- the highest title that a woman can ever have. But he denied her of that. And now his niece is strolling in and people are obsessed with her. And it's just like, why not me? Yeah. Why not me? What has she got that I don't got, you know? Yeah, I would totally think about that. So she might be thinking at this point, they're going to come for me and my son and kill him and replace us with Nero. Like, that's this whole yeah. shady lady politics in Rome. Spoiler I mean, alert. I mean, like we already said, they, ki- they, they, would, they were not above killing babies. They killed Caligula's daughter, who was like only two years old. So that's a real... That's a real concern. So yeah, I I'm just like imagining her leaving that game, just being like, I got to do something desperate. Like I'm yeah, desperate. She, I got to do yeah. something big. Yeah. So yeah. the story goes that after the games, Messalina sent a group of men to execute Nero in his sleep. So Nero, again, we said he's like two, three years older than Britannica at the time. So he's like 10 or so. But when the men arrived, they saw a snake slither out of the bed from underneath Nero's I'm bed. a snake. Almost, almost, a smaller, a smaller uh, <laughs> So they took that as a bad omen because in Roman culture, you know, seeing a snake was nope, 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 nope. It was like a, it was a bad omen from the gods. Yeah, nope. And you know what? It, bad omen to me in general. If I see a snake, I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Whole lot of nope. That situation, um, they aban- they they abandoned it. Yeah, yeah. This <laughs> this story is another one of those tales that we don't know if it actually happened and if it did we don't know if messalina was behind it but we do know that nero and agrippina told her body about it yeah so it could have also been agrippina making the story up to make her son like this godlike figure because protected by the gods and this is the the woman that wants to kill him yeah yeah. yeah. So let's discuss that just for a second. Do you think she was desperate enough to have made a move like this? No. You I don't do think so? Not. I honestly think Agrippina saw what happened and was like, this is good timing. Like, and was like, I yep. have a good, I have a good group of people behind me, you know. Okay. Germanicus was, you know. So you think that Agrippina made up the whole story? 
I do. Okay. Okay. Heard it here first. Queen's podcast. I don't know. I don't really know how I, I think she may have been desperate enough, but yeah, we just don't have enough information to know if it's true or not. But, um, in the eyes of Rome at the time, it did happen. So yes, I do think she, Messalina was starting to lose her shit a little bit. Like I said, she's desperate. And that is the only reason I can kind of try to make myself understand what happened next. I no. also think a lot of heavy drinking was involved in what happened next because Just two two drinks of her cocktail that was <laughs> she, girl, she, I feel messy. She had <laughs> two of these cocktails and she was fucked up. Um, I do think she was losing her mind a little bit. I think she was super paranoid and I think she was super drunk. So that being said, let's discuss the final act in the in the mess that is Messalina. So her downfall, you yes. remember Silius, right? I do. So, you know, it's not, not Nathan Gaius Silius. Not Gaius Silius. Gaius Gaius Silius. So him and Messalina have been going strong for a year now. So she convinced him, you know what? You should divorce your wife. And yep. she had been slowly moving her couch in, her, mm-hmm. you know, refrigerator, her 70 inch TV. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all, all her of shoes. her electronics. All yes. her shoes. Everything. Everything. Was... <laughs> and then one day, so Claudius was out of town and she married Silius? Uh, question mark, question mark, question mark. I don't, I don't understand that. I have tried to read this from every possible angle and I just, I, I don't. I don't understand. Like, why? I don't understand. I don't. (laughs) So she was still married to Claudius, you Mm -hmm. know, emperor of Rome. Yeah. And you've heard of him. And ancient Rome does not believe in bigamy. Uh, This is not normal. No. But allegedly, uh, while Claudius was out of town, she and Silius threw a big, lavish wedding over the top. And... But, invited uh, everybody that was everybody why would they do this why i it doesn't make sense it it's just the math is sense. not mathing i don't understand like i you are the expert on math too i am i am the mathing expert <laughs> um we're not the only people in history or that like have viewed this and just kind of been left a little bit stumped like some scholars do say that Claudius had already signed off on them getting married. So him, so Claudius and Messalina were discussing getting a divorce. And so he'd already given his blessing that once we're divorced, you can marry Silius. That we have no proof of that. That's just a um theory. But why wouldn't why wouldn't she have waited? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it, it just it doesn't make sense. Or there's this, another theory. That this lavish party was maybe like maybe it was just pretend. Mm-hmm. Like they were pretending to get married at this huge party, and this is like, like I said, they were drunk. Maybe, they were just drunk yeah. as hell. <laughs> and like maybe this would be fun. So there know. is a theory. There's a Roman god Dionysus who is the god of wine, and also patron god of Queen's podcast. Obviously. And obviously. And some people speculate that they were actually performing this this ritual that, like, a man and woman did together in this Dionysus celebration. And then, like, you know that game of telephone where, like, somebody whispers something in your ear and by the time it gets to the 10th person, it's something completely different? And so that the rumors just started spreading. And by the time it got to Claudius, it was they got married. Um, oh, so yeah. that is the only theory that makes any sense to me. But still, you had you had to have been very drunk to do anything that like maybe looked like you were getting married in front of everybody, you know? Yeah. So, so Messalina <sighs> wakes up the next day with a huge hangover, like we did the day after we saw Rocky Horror. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> and she gets word that Claudius is coming home early, and he thinks. Oh shit, you're trying to overthrow me. Molly, you in danger, girl. Yeah, because Narcissus was looking for something to get Messalina on. And so he is like, I fucking got it. And he's like telling Claudius, like, this is what she did. She did this because she wants to overthrow you and put Silius as emperor. She is, she's coming for you. 
And Claudius, who apparently just believes anything he hears, is like, okay, okay. You know? <laughs> you have the best Claudius. Yeah, I'm Claudius. Yeah. <laughs> so, Messalina, at this point, uh, makes a move that reminds me of Anne Boleyn right before mm-hmm. her arrest. Mm-hmm. So she takes her two kids, who are like seven and eight, runs out to meet Claudius in his carriage, and then is begging for mercy and, you know, just trying to remind him of how much he loves his children and how she's the mother of his children. So spare her. Yeah. Uh, uh. Anne Boleyn did something very similar with Elizabeth. Yeah. Right before yeah. she got arrested. But Narcissus sees her coming down the street and is just basically like, Claudius, here's some documents. Look at this scroll and look over there. And like, he doesn't, so he doesn't see Messalina, supposedly. Uh, and she's and a mess. Messali- yeah, oh. Messalina is a mouse. Um, and she runs to the palace, met by the guards, and she's like, get the fuck out of my way. And they're like, nope, nope, sorry. We have can't orders saying that we can't do this. Would love to let and you in, we can't do it. She's panicking. And then Narcissus comes out and is like, you have a lot of nerve to show your face around here. Yeah, and they get into this huge screaming match but narcissus came prepared he's like i got a list i got a list of all your transgressions you've been sleeping around with every senator in town you had my friend executed you had women exiled over your jealousy you tried to kill nero and and he's like yelling this in front of like everybody and it's kind of like starting to form a crowd of people being like what the hell is going on and yeah, so she's like, she realizes that she is not going to win this fight with Narcissus, so she gets the fuck out of there. She runs the fuck off. Like, um, anxiety. I can feel her anxiety <laughs> through time. Like, I'm just imagining her with this pounding headache and just, like, panicking, like, this bad, this bad, this bad, bad, bad. Um, she ends up at these gardens that she loved. We didn't have time to go into this story about how there were these gardens that she loved, and she had the guy that owned it killed supposed allegedly so that she could have them and so because there's just so much murder in this story yeah and then she has a nervous breakdown and then she sends for her mother like you know i want, I want my, my mom, mom too. Yeah. and maybe but, her mom's like hmm shouldn't try to fuck my husband i don't know yeah um, oh, oh, oh. but roman bitches are brutal as shit and we've talked about this uh before uh but her mom's advice was kill yourself Kill yourself. That's the only honorable thing to do at this point. And yeah, her mom's like, look, I'm going to be straight with you. This is bad. This is real bad. The only honorable thing to do is to take your own life. And And like me, Messalina, (laughs) do it. (laughs) I would have been like, mom, there are so many other options. We could just right? run away. We could get disguises. We could go We go back to the brothel. I'm very popular there. I'll just stay but there. In, in Roman society, her not doing it was seen as being a coward. Right. Like, right. today's standards, we'd be like, what the hell? But yeah. back then, that was normal for nobility to be like, all right, I'm no longer in power. Got to kill myself. Right. Like, what? What? So back at the palace, Claudius is having dinner, and apparently... He's just really confused about the situation. And he's like weighing, he's making a pros and cons list about like, what do I, do I kill my wife? You know, like, um, and apparently he's actually leaning more towards, well, she's the mother of my children and everybody makes mistakes and like is leaning more towards some kind of clemency. And um, it's like, have I been the ideal husband? We, you know, there's bad on both sides of this relationship. Let me think about this a little bit more. Yeah, and Narcissus was like, oh, that's a really interesting concept. Mm-hmm. Clemency, okay. you say. Mm-hmm. Mm, BRB. BRB. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes and tells the guards, Claudius says to go kill Messalina. And, and then they do. They do. They're just like, I'm, that, he probably did. That seems, like, that seems like kind of a logical step in this situation. So... Empress Messalina, while in her favorite gardens with her mother, was run down and killed um, with her mother as a witness by the guards in 48 AD. Immediately after, mm -hmm. there was a huge attempt to straight up erase her from history. I mean, they kind of did. Oh. Yeah, well, (laughs) yeah, like like they 
that's probably why we don't have anything written about her until everybody in the story is dead. Like, cause they, it was like complete erasure from history. Um, yeah, all the statues. She had like, yeah. All the scrolls, anything with her name on it, gone. It was done. It was just yeah. gotten rid of because you had like Nero right afterwards. And yeah. Yeah. Alert, that wasn't great either. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and Agrippina became such a powerful person right after that. And Agrippina had, so much so many reasons to like erase her from history so however we do know that she existed now and let's be real her reputation is horrible but she was a desperate woman woman working with what she had in a time that didn't leave a lot of options for women so you know what let's raise a glass let's raise a glass She's messy and this drink was real messy I got messy. Girl, <laughs> messy Messalina. Messy Messalina. Cheers, bitches. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Bye-bye.